Viktor Orban is employing this tactic of blackmailing the the other leaders, the mm-hmm. EU institutions, that if the money uh, is not unblocked for Hungary, he will basically veto every important strategic uh, decision. Currently, mostly about Ukraine, as this is the most important stake at the European Council's meeting. Hello, my name is Nicholas Furnival. You are watching or listening to an OSW interview. Today I'm talking to Andrzej Sadecki, the head of OSW's Central European Department. We'll be discussing the positions which Hungary will be taking at the December European Council meeting. Hi, Andrzej. Hi, Nick. On the 14th and 15th of December, there is the European Council meeting. European Council brings together the heads of state of all the European Union countries. We're interested in Hungary's head of state, Viktor Orban. Um, But what's on the agenda of this meeting? I can see three items at the top of the agenda. Ukraine, the Middle East and expansion of the European Union. Are any of these agenda items sensitive for Hungary? The summit in December is absolutely crucial for Ukraine as the essential decisions will be taken during the summit. And this relates both to the money that uh, Ukraine will be uh, receiving from the EU. And this is about the sort of long term support of the EU uh, to the Ukraine for 2024-27. And this is about uh, 50 billion Euro, so the so-called uh, Ukrainian facility. And the other essential issue on the agenda will be about opening the accession talks with Ukraine, but also with Moldova and uh, well, perhaps some other countries. So the summit in December is, is uh, of huge importance for the future of Ukraine and EU's help to this country. And we have uh, Hungary that is threatening to block uh, basically all these issues. Mm -hmm. So Hungary since uh, mid-November, more or less, after the European Commission recommended to start the negotiations with uh, Ukraine, uh, radicalized its uh, stance and it's uh, it's threatening basically openly to, to block all the uh, issues relating to Ukraine. Mm-hmm. At the moment, though, the, there's been a couple of changes to the, the shape of the European Council. Is Orban alone in this opposition to Ukraine? Well, definitely Orban is the most vocal. It seems that most of the countries are in favor, if not all, Mm -hmm. but Hungary, especially regarding the Ukraine facility. So the funding for Ukraine regarding EU enlargement, which was, uh, you know, uh, stuck for many years since 2013. uh, No uh, country basically joined uh, the EU after Mm -hmm. Croatia. And since the um, Russian invasion on Ukraine, we have a sort of... uh, renewed uh, interest in the enlargement. So we have especially Ukraine and Moldova that are uh, that received uh, a year and a half ago the status of a candidate. And now uh, it seems that there is this sense of geopolitical necessity to enlarge the the EU in the sort of uncertain uh, times that we are in. Certainly you have countries that are uh, especially in favor of uh, EU expansion to the Western Balkans. So you have Austria, you have other countries of the region that are sort of particularly advocating for uh, these countries. But overall, it seems that Viktor Orban will be the only leader at the European Council that will be against. We'll see whether he will finally change his mind or, or, or until the very end in all of this issue, he will keep his veto. Mm -hmm. Uh, Orban has been very vocal about his opposition and he's been at pains to explain why. So what are his declared arguments against against Ukraine and EU expansion? 
Well, it has been changing, actually. Uh, for a long time, he was... Well, Hungary was for a long time uh, supportive of the EU enlargement as such, no matter whether it's about the Western Balkans or, or Eastern Europe. But in the same time, you had the dispute with Ukraine regarding uh, minority rights. Uh, in Western uh, Ukraine, you have a significant, although diminishing, uh, number of ethnic Hungarians, mm -hmm. uh, about 100,000 people, maybe now less with the war and emigration. And this was a point of contention and for a long time Hungary was sort of skeptical but still it voted in favor uh, a year and a half ago to giving Ukraine candidate status. Mm -hmm. These arguments are anymore uh, there in um, Hungary's rhetoric let's say. There are other arguments that are presented by uh, Viktor Orban and his people and um, this is these are various arguments. This is basically a call for not enlarging EU or not accepting Ukraine because it is at war, because uh, it is corrupt, because it is not ready, even if, of course, it's just about the beginning of the negotiation talks. I mean, no country was basically ready when the negotiation talks started. Mm -hmm. And the European Commission, actually, this is an interesting detail, the European Commission prepared a report that uh, recommended opening of the negotiation talks with Ukraine and the uh, Directorate General uh, that is responsible for that is led by a Hungarian, which uh, mm -hmm. uh, Oliver Varhei, who was actually nominated to the commission by uh, Viktor Orban. So basically Orban is uh, questioning the recommendation that was prepared under the supervision of his uh, nominee. Some of these do seem like fairly valid arguments, but there are many theories that there are, there are ulterior motives uh, from Hungary and Viktor Orban, that they are using um, Ukraine as a pawn in order to gain something from the European Union. What would that situation be? Well, it seems that it's mostly about the money. So the funds that Hungary uh, was supposed to uh, receive, but they are uh, frozen or blocked due to the to the Hungary's problems with the rule of law. It seems that if you look at the timing when the decisions are supposed to be taken, if you look at the sheer amount of the money that are blocked to Hungary and, and how important they are for the Hungarian economy currently, it seems that this is one of the most important things that is at stake. So Viktor Orban is, in a way, um, employing this tactic of blackmailing the, the other leaders, the mm -hmm. EU institutions, that if the money uh, is not unblocked for Hungary, he will basically uh, veto every important strategic uh, decision. Currently, mostly about Ukraine, as this is the most important stake at the European Council's meeting. Mm -hmm. Should we give any credence to the ideas that Hungary generally is pro-Russian? Uh, you know, there are various members of the government who are pro-Russian and Orban himself met Putin recently in China. Definitely we can say that the position of Hungary is radicalizing. I mean, we see that regarding the war, regarding Russia, regarding Ukraine. Orban recently, quite recently, in October, uh, met with uh, President Putin in Beijing. Hungary has been more and more harsh in criticizing Ukraine, arguing also internationally to uh, stop helping Ukraine, basically. So it obviously plays into Russia's hands. This is definitely part of the of the whole situation we don't know for sure how much of this uh, threats of vetoing the most important eu decisions regarding ukraine are bluffs and how much it is serious or how much the 
um, the position of Hungary really radicalized. This is what we will actually learn during the summit. And uh, we will know after the, the summit ends whether Orban moves uh, in his position and eventually accepts at least part of the things that are at the table because we can also uh, think about the the scenario that one of the decisions will be taken in a sort of compromise manner and the other not. It's difficult now when the negotiations are ongoing to determine which, which, which direction it will uh, take. Could I ask if this strategy is working? Because Orban is on all the front pages, all the headlines at the moment, we're talking about him, but is it effective? Is he going to get what he wants from this? Well, it is working to some extent. We see that Orban was able to somehow, after being isolated basically in the EU for a long time, we see often these pictures of uh, European Council when he stands alone and all the other le leaders are talking in the, in the breaks. So he was able to kind of elevate his uh, stance and... Uh, if you look at the last days, last weeks, he was approached by many other leaders. He was visited by Charles Michel, the, um, the head of the European Council. He was invited to Paris to have a dinner with uh, Emmanuel Macron. Uh, he um, he's called approached by by other le leaders. So, in a way, it works to somehow again be in the game, let's say. But on the other hand, we don't know what the result will be, whether the funds will be really uh, unfrozen. There are some speculation that part of the funds will be unfrozen. Orban uh, accepted some of the demands uh, made by the European Commission and Hungary made some changes in its um, anti-corruption law, etc. The question is how much they will be implemented and this is unclear. The full answer to this question will be given at the European Council Summit. Okay, so we'll be watching carefully. Thank you very much, Andrzej. Thank you. Thank you for watching this OSW interview. If you'd like to see more content like this, please subscribe to our channel.